This video is the first in the mini series on digital logic here where we're going to cover Boolean algebra. So there's a slight difference between Boolean algebra and propositional logic. For the sake of application and the sake of how laws work and truth tables, they come out exactly the same, but the conventions are slightly different. So this video just goes over the conventions. If you're unsure about how I got to all the stuff in this video, uh, the entire series on propositional logic covers it. It's the same thing. I'm just showing the new conventions here. Okay, in digital logic, or in Boolean algebra, we have ones and zeros again, which is why I use them in propositional logic. But one doesn't mean true and zero doesn't mean false. Typically we want to think of as one being on or active and zero being off or inactive. So it's kind of like when you have a light switch, if this light switch is turned down, then you say, okay, this is now in the off configuration. But if you have a light switch and it happens to be flicked up, you would say that it is in the on configuration. So it's a one there. That could be one example of a system. Uh, if you think of a security system for your house, typically you have uh, an alarm that can only be active when all the windows are closed. So you would want all of the windows to be in an off state. Or maybe you have a machine that dispenses a drink. Well, while it's dispensing a drink, it is turned on that function. While it's not dispensing a drink, it is turned off. So. It's the same result as propositional logic, but the symbols, the connectives, all those things are slightly different. So I want to talk about those. Okay, I'm going to compare the two side by side. So here's the different operators. In propositional logic, when we want to do something like not on P, we use this negation symbol. In Boolean algebra, typically the first new thing is that we use lowercase letters, X, Y, Z, and so on. We can use capital letters too. But when we have a negation, we put a little line on top. So this would be not x. Or you could think of it like x bar or x complement. For or, we have this symbol that is p or q. So we use the v, this thing called a wedge. And we put it between the two. In digital logic, in Boolean algebra, we have x and y. And we use a plus symbol. So that is why in some systems of propositional logic, or introduction is called addition, because it uses the addition symbol in Boolean algebra. For P and Q, typically we use the caret or the ampersand. In digital logic, it's a little bit different. We just write these side by side. This is also used for set theory in probability. So for instance, in set theory in discrete math, typically we would write P and Q, P intersection Q, but in probability it uses just PQ. It's sort of the same idea with logic when it comes to Boolean algebra versus propositional logic. Implication is the same, which is nice. So if we have P arrow Q in Boolean algebra, we can do the same thing with X and Y, but typically how we would write this instead is we would use its equivalent. So instead of writing X arrow Y, uh, we know that this is the same thing as not x or y, so perhaps instead, I write it on the side, we might write uh, x plus y, and then x gets a complement. So that'd be the same thing as not x or y. Exclusive or uses the same symbol for either one, so whether we have x, y, whether we have p, q, we use the little circle with a plus sign in it, so this is exclusive or, this means either one of x or y is true, but not both. Uh, you can always write it in its equivalent, which is not x and y, or x and not y. And for equivalence, there is a very slight difference, but depending on the logic system you use, you might use the same symbol. Uh, in Boolean algebra, you use three lines to be equal to. And in propositional logic, we use the double-sided arrow. So very slight differences here, uh, but essentially these are the differences between Boolean algebra and propositional logic. They're still translated the same way, but the symbols are slightly different. Now one thing I'll point out here is imagine I want to take the negation of and. So I want to take not and. In propositional logic, we would take these two things, put brackets beside them, and put a negation outside. In Boolean algebra, we simply put a bar above both of these. So there is a difference 
between, and I should put these really close together so we can see them, uh, there is a difference between these two things. So these are not the same thing. Uh, not x and not y, so this would be like saying uh, not x and not y, while the one on the right here is more like saying not x and y. So there is a difference with how we use the bars, just to point that out. Okay, truth tables are also the same as they are in propositional logic, but typically in digital logic, we start with the false cases up at the top and the true cases at the bottom. So when I teach university course on propositional logic for linguists, I always get a couple students who do it like this because they're brought up as computing scientists. It drives me a little bit crazy because I'm not used to seeing it like this because I don't work in digital logic, but this is how it is done in digital logic. So when we take not x, of course, this is just the opposite value of x. So if x is zero, then not x is one. If x is one, then not x is zero. Uh, with x or y, x plus y, it is false if I, if uh, it's false if both of x and y are false, but it is true in every other case. So it is true if x is true, or if y is true, or if both are true. Uh, for x and y, it's only going to be true when both x and y are true at the same time, and it will be false in every other case. So you'll notice by now, these are just the truth tables for propositional logic with the formulas below, but they're reversed top to bottom. Uh, with x arrow y, this is the same thing as saying not x or y. So this is going to be true when either y is true, so in rows two and four, or when x is false, so rows one and two, and it will be false whenever you have x true and y false. It's the same thing as p arrow q. Uh, the exclusive or is only true when the values of x and y are different. So it's true in the two middle rows and false in the outer rows. And the biconditional equivalence is only true when the values are the same. So when x and y are both zero or both one, and then it is false when you have differing values. So when you work with digital logic, you gotta think, okay, this isn't just like a one zero 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 truth table for and, it becomes a zero 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 one truth table for and. So just keep that in mind. This is just a convention. Of course, you can write it the other way if you want, but people who work in digital logic might not be too happy with you. It's just, you, you typically, you take the conventions of the field you're in, and this is how the convention works. Okay, the last thing we'll talk about are laws. So, what we can do to sort of aid ourselves is think, well, what does this mean in terms of uh, propositional logic? How does this translation work? So, for example, x plus x, this is the same thing as saying, x or x. So when we think about, well, x or x, this is called idempotence. This just gives me x back. So that's what we get in digital logic as well. We take x or x, we get x. Uh, if we take x or not x, well, we know this is a tautology. This comes out to true in our system. So in digital logic, x or not x, uh, this comes out to one, where one is true. Uh, what if we have x or a contradiction? What do we get? Well, we just get x back. Since x will be true, contradiction is always false. So x or 0 is the same thing as saying x. Uh, what about x or true? So this is true when either x is true or true is true, but the tautology is always true, so we just get the tautology out of it. So x or 1 gives us 1. Uh, x plus y. We have commutativity. So x or y, x plus y is the same thing as y plus x, or y or x. We can flip those around. And then this last one is De Morgan's. So this might not be obvious, but if we have p or q and r, in fact, maybe I should just use the same letters we have in digital logic, but capital. So x or y and z, we know this is the same thing as saying x or y and x or z, we're just using De Morgan's law to expand that. So we get the same thing with digital logic. So we either get uh, x plus y, so it's x or y, and we get x or z. So I have to make sure I'm using plus symbols instead of the or. So this one looks a little bit weird because you're probably thinking arithmetic. x plus y times z does not expand to this, but in Boolean algebra it does. Okay, now the laws on the right 
Uh, they're the same thing, except instead of using ors, now we're using ands. So if I can think of it along these lines, let's just change the symbol here and see what happens to speed things up a little bit. Okay, if we have x and x, well, that's just the same thing as x. It gives us x back. So if we have x and x, well, we get x. What if we get x and not x? Well, this is always a contradiction. This is false. You cannot have both x and not x at the same time. So in Boolean algebra, that gives us a zero. If we have x and the contradiction, well, it has to, both of these have to be true to get an output. But the contradiction is always false, which means that this will always be false. So x times zero is zero. Uh, x and true, well, it's always going to be true. All the time it's going to be true. So we're going to get x back in this case. x and true, well, uh, it depends on the condition of x. If x is true, it'll be true. If x is false, then it'll be false. So in Boolean algebra, that gives us x back. We have commutativity. So if we have x and y, we also have y and x. And De Morgan's law works the same way. This one is a little bit more arithmetic friendly. So if we have x and y or z, we can use De Morgan's to get x and y or x and z. So when we expand this out in Boolean algebra, we're going to get xy plus xz. So let me clear this up a little bit. Let's get all the, the blue out of the way so we can see our results. And the nice thing about this, the nice thing about this is that in some of these cases, it is very intuitive from regular algebra how this works. So for instance, the case where we have x plus zero being x, x or false being x, uh, this just follows naturally from how addition works. Uh, same with x times zero giving us zero. That's x and false gives us false. Uh, it's the same way with x times one. <laughs> if we say x and true, we get x back. Uh, if we take a look at commutativity for both of these, it works the same way. And the only one that's a little weird is saying that x plus one gives us one, and also this weird one down here. But uh, this follows how actual addition and multiplication work to some extent. So don't rely on that as a fact for how this stuff works or as a trick to help you remember everything, but it's a connection that you can make in your head if it helps. Anyway, uh, I don't have any practice or anything for this. It's just more so to show you the differences between propositional logic and digital logic. We'll start talking about this in more detail in future videos, but if you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments below, and I will answer you in again.